Hello YouTube. In this video I'm going to teach you how to use the ping command in Windows. This command also works very well in Linux. Um, some of the switches may be a little different in Linux and the syntax may be a little different but for the most it follows about the same command structure. In Windows if you just type in ping in an IP address it only pings it four times. In Linux it will ping forever so you do want to use the switch to set the number of times that it pings and then stops so in Windows 7 if you click on the start button down here there will be a search and run you can just type in CMD and hit enter there if you're using Windows 10 like this you come over here and click on Cortana or the search bar if you have the full search bar down here and then just type in CMD and hit enter and as you can see, this right here is it. This is Charlie Mike Delta. So we're going to put in ping slash question mark. So this will give you the actual options, which are the switches to use. And it gives you the syntax and how to use it in Windows. So for one option, minus T is to ping a specific host until stop. That allows it to just ping forever, which is the default in Linux. So if you just put in ping and don't put in that switch right there at all, it only pings four times. That's it. If you use the minus A, that resolves address to host names. If you use the minus N and then put in a space and put in a specified number, that is the number of times that it sends a ping request and then stops. So you can put in uh, ping minus n space 60 uh, 192 168 one, one, which will be most home default routers and it'll ping your routers uh, literally 60 times and then just stop <clears throat> if your router is designed to block ICMP packet requests then you'll probably see 60 failures now you can hit minus L and then specify the size to send a specific buffer size you use minus F, that tells it not to fragment the packet at all, it only works in IPv4. You have minus I, which will give you the, and you can set the time to live to whatever you want it to be. This helps to obscure what operating system the ping request is actually coming from, because it's pretty standard with Windows that it will either use 64 or 128 TTL. Uh, minus V. And the TOS, that'll give you the type of service that's running. Uh, minus R and count will record the route for the count hops. Um, I haven't really used minus R. I wonder if it's similar to trace route. It probably is from the looks of it. And then you have minus S, which will give you the timestamp for the count and hops. And then J will give you the host list. K will give you a different host list. J does it loose source. And K does it through strict source routing. And then you have W timeout. And it will wait for so many milliseconds before it just drops it. Minus R which will give you the route heading to test reverse routes. Minus S. That will give you the source address to use. This is one way to spoof an IP. And then you have minus C, which gives you the compartment routing and identification, minus P, which gives you ping a Hyper-V network virtualization provider address. That's really handy whenever you're trying to troubleshoot possible network problems with a Hyper-V VM and server 2008 or 2012. And then you have minus 4, which forces it to use IPv4, and minus 6, which forces it to use IPv6. So to put this in practice, we'll say ping 192, 168, dot 1, dot 2. So as you can see, it went for the 4, lost out, and failed because the IP was incorrect, which is absolutely fine. We're just going to ping 192.168.1.2. And you'll see that the TTL comes back as 64. Zero percent loss, so we're not having any network problems. 
that is one of my wireless APs. I have free wireless APs on my home network here. Uh, covers my entire yard, my garage, my whole house. So anywhere we're at, we can get on the wireless network. So now let's say we want to ping, let's ping Google. So we're going to do 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. Now, as you can see, it comes back with a TTL of 53, started out at 64. We got a full response, so now let's verify that this is Google. So we're going to do a ping dash A, or minus A, of 8.8.8.8. .8 and as you can see, that's DNS dash A dot Google dot com. So sure enough, we're pinging out to Google's public DNS. Okay, now, as you can recall from up here, if you do a dash in, you can actually set the number of times you want it to ping. So let's say ping minus A minus N. We're going to do it 10 times to 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. There's the standard four, and you see it continues on from there. Now, I can understand the thought of why is this important. Well, let's say you have an intermittent problem on a network. And you're pretty sure you know what one it is, but you're not 100% for sure. So you set it up to do a ping, and you do ping minus T. And you have somebody sitting there actively watching it. And you can unplug the network cable. And if that connection drops, sure enough, you found the right one. You can use ping to verify you are getting out on a network. So let's say you just set a network up. You're not 100% sure you have internet access. You pull up ping. You ping out to 8.8.8.8, .8 .8, which the only way you're going to do that is with internet access. And you receive a return that tells you that you have a connection to it. Guess what? You're on the internet. Let's say you have a host on the system that needs to be rebooted. You want to verify that it reboots. Well, the easiest way to do that is to send the reboot command, which you can do on a corporate network. You can do a uh, shutdown minus R minus F minus M. That is a forced reboot, so the user cannot cancel it. The minus R tells it to reboot and put in the IP address. And if that was an actual node host on there, then you could hit enter and it would force it to reboot. Then you could put in ping 192.168.1.2. We're going to go ahead and uh, pretend that like my access points IP address is the actual IP for a host on the system. Then if you were to put in a 192.168.1.2 after sending the remote shutdown request to it, or reboot request to it then you can sit there and run a ping on it and watch it as it drops because it'll be pinging 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 then request timeout 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 and then bam it'll come back and it'll start answering and replying again and you'll start getting your uh, time to live the bite the time you know so many milliseconds and once it starts responding, then you know the thing fully cycled, it rebooted, there's no question whether or not it rebooted. And from that point, the user can either use it or you can remote into it through a remote desktop or other options and work on the system, continue working on it. So there's, there's a lot of areas where ping comes in very, very, very handy. So ping helps out, it's a really good tool, especially for, um, network admins or anybody setting up a network to help troubleshoot a problem now let's say you can't connect to one of your systems on your network you suspect it's a bad network cable you set up a ping minus t to the ip address you sit there and look at it it's not getting through you plug in the cable you walk over look at it and all of a sudden it's getting through yeah you probably had a bad cable or a bad bad connection so 
it, it's it's a tool meant for helping with troubleshooting various issues. It's part of the reason why it uses the ICMP protocol, which is entirely meant for actually communicating possible network problems. This information is out there for absolutely everybody as always. Watch, like, and share. Have yourselves a great day.